everybody. Welcome to my Vintage Love. Today we're going to share my hat collection. Don't worry though, we're not going to show each hat individually. I'm just going to show you each genre of hats. First up is the boater hat. I own 11 boater hats, which is about 10 more than any sane individual should own. But I really like them, so I have lots of them. Um, if you're new to boater hats, these are these great straw woven hats. Um, you usually kind of aim for the summertime wear. Uh, some pointers though, if you're out there buying them, a rougher weave like this one is a little bit more casual versus one that has a tighter weave like this is a little bit more formal. So just so you know what they are. And oftentimes you'll find the hats that are in great shape, but the ribbon has fallen apart or dis disintegrated with time. Um, you can always go and replace them. I do that with plenty of my hats. Um, it's also great though too when you can find a specialty hat like this one here, I bought this uh, when I was in uh, Venice, Italy. This is what the hats that all the gondoliers wear. Um, it was a really fun piece for me to have and a great little memories uh, associated with it. And next up on our list is helmets. Um, you won't be wearing these very often, but they're great fun to have. From the traditional pith helmet to a polo cap, some equestrian riding hats, and check this out, an actual English bobby helmet. This is really amazing, it's from the uh, Cheshire County. And then even an amazing old pith helmet from the 1906 Philippine campaign. Um, one thing about pith helmets though, I have this really fancy one from Lock & Co, but it's kind of too fancy to even use. If you're gonna go buy one, I'd go buy a cheap one like this. Um, I've worn this on lots of adventures, namely out at Burning Man, and I, it's really great to have, and it's also really fun to not have a hat that you're worried about getting a little dirty or a little bit scuffed up. So I, if you're gonna go with the pith helmet, go with a cheaper one. You'll be happier that you did. Hey, straw Panama hats here. So I picked up these from a variety of places. I picked this one up at the Boardwalk Empire costume sale. I paid just a few pennies for it and I've heard it's worth a lot of money. Uh, this is another great modern one I have here. And you see with these, both of these hats here, I've been kind of just casual with the brims. Don't be afraid to give them a nice bend, give them a little bit of a rakish uh, feel to it. Rakish feel, rakish feel, thank you so much. And my sweetheart behind the camera insists that I say that I don't I look like uh, Belloc from the Indiana Jones films. Thanks. Um, if you want a really more uh, traditional, almost uh, agrarian style of hat, you can get a real flat brimmed one here. Kind of has a nice little classic genteel look. Wow, well looky here, we've got a huge collection of dink caps. Um, that's a name for the hats that freshmen would wear when they would go off to college. So a way to sort of signify who is the newbie in school. Um, fun thing about all of these uh, freshman beanies is that they either have the uh, numbers of their school year on it, or sometimes even just the initial for the school. Um, a prized piece of my collection is a 1906, 1907, either probably cricketer or rowing captain's hat. I think it's a great uh, little detail here. It's in really rough shape, but it's a, a prized piece of my collection. Um, it's also fun to have cricketing caps that have either really bold stripes like this, or maybe just a small crest for the school on the front. So these are my daytime semi-formal hats. You got the classic Homburg here, more standard of fedoras here, and then the uh, really fun Stetson Open Road. Uh, with your hats, don't be afraid to personalize them a little bit. A friend gave me this feather, so I put it in the hat band. Also, I took the Stetson Open Road, added this cute little uh, sterling silver and turquoise safety pin onto the hat band gives it a little southwestern flair. If you're into the vintage world, you know that wearing a suit won't get you much attention. But the second you put a hat on, everybody says, wow, look at you, you're dressed up, how vintage. It's, it's a nice little thing you can do to up your game. These are my formal hats. They're lots of fun to have. You have the classic derby or uh, bowler hat. Homburg hat, always fun. The gray topper here is one of my personal favorites. I try to wear it at uh, the Easter parade here. If you're going to the opera, be sure to have your opera hat. And my favorite top hat is this one right here. This belonged to my great grandfather, Rudolf Wilhelm. Um, it was lost to the family and then came back to the family and back to me. Um, it's really special 
and I was able to wear it on my wedding day, so it has a um, really great personal sentiment to me. Um, if you're out there in the market, though, and you come across a top hat that's in really rough shape like this one, you might want to consider buying it. Having a top hat that's really kind of already dinged up and scratched is a great thing to have because you're not too afraid of wearing it and dinging it yourself since it's already in such bad shape. I've worn this a few times to Burning Man and had a great time there with it. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe below if you haven't already and follow us on Instagram at MyVintageLoveBlog for more regular updates. Thanks so much. Bye.